Hello, everyone. My name is Shana Weiss. I am the Associate Director of the Schusterman Center for Israel Studies. I am thrilled today that you have joined us for our uh, December meeting of the Studio Israel series, which we um, inaugurated in the fall of 2020 in partnership with a host of incredible institutions, including the Hadassah Brandeis Institute, the Schusterman Center for Israel Studies, um, at Brandeis University, the Vilna Shul. Uh, we want to thank the um, really generous support from Combined Jewish Philanthropy, CJP, and also the support of the Consulate General um, of Israel to New England. This series is all about hearing from all different sorts of artists, academics, community leaders through the landscape of Israeli art, dance, food, music, and more. Um, and we are really excited that you are all here. And I'm especially excited for today's conversation. I am going to introduce um, our, our participants and then I will um, leave it to them and duck back in for Q&A at the end. So at, at any time you have any questions, please put your questions into the chat um, and I will um, ask them um, time permitting um, in about 45 minutes. So today we have Aviva Desse. Um, she is a first generation immigrant from Ethiopia. She is a musician. She sings about society, freedom, love. You actually heard her music in that minute, first minute or so um, of our meeting today. She, her most recent album, I believe, In My Thoughts, came out in 2019 uh, in March and got rave reviews. Um, she sings in English and Amharic. She mixes together traditional Ethiopian sounds, contemporary, you know, Western music. We'll hear all about it. Um, and she originally was discovered on the Israeli version of The Voice, which I like to you know, joke around to my students is called The Voice. Um, and she also has toured with Idan Reichel and her own music um, all over Israel, Europe, and North America. Uh, Shula Mola is um, many, many things, a dear friend, an activist, a scholar. Um, she is currently a postdoctoral fellow at the Hadassah Brandeis Institute. She last year was a fellow with us at the Schusterman Center for Israel Studies. She has many, many amazing accomplishments. Um, in addition to her academic career, she was chairperson of the Association of Ethiopian Jews for over 10 years, a co-founder of Mothers on Guard, Imahot al Mishmar, which protested police brutality against youth of um, Ethiopian origin, um, a member of board member of the New Israel Fund. I can go on and on and on, but I will stop there. So thank you all both so much for being here and I'm excited to listen to the conversation. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Shana. Thank you to everyone who makes this gathering happen. Uh, to be honest, I'm really excited. Um, I feel honored to have you here, Aveva, to have this conversation. Oh, thank with you. you. Uh, I want to tell you something. Yes. Um, I saw you, the first time I saw you, It also the first time I saw you as a musician, was in 2016, maybe 2017, at mm -hmm. the special evening that organized by a friend of mine, Yair Kochav, at the, at the founder of Tahrir, the Mizrahi Culture Bar. I don't know if you remember it. The purpose in Jerusalem, the, in Jerusalem yes. Yes. The, the, purpose, the purpose of that meeting was uh, to talk about police brutality against uh, Ethiopian, mm -hmm. Ethiopian community, especially uh, Ethiopian young men. And yes. we focused on the one specific case, if you remember, Yosef Salamsa, who was one of the, he is one of the uh, victim of police brutality. Yes. Uh, it was very tense evening. And in the end of that evening, I saw you stood up from the crowd with your guitar and got to the stage and they follow you, like my eyes follow you. And I ask myself, wow, Mizot, who is this young lady? 
<laughs> and it was before you played the guitar, before I heard your voice. And since that time, I saw you several times in different events. I'm listening to your music. And I have this opportunity to tell you that I'm really your fan. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's amazing, because I, I must say that I'm a fan of your work, <laughs> especially your social work. You do amazing things that, that are so important. And I'm so happy that I got the chance to do that with you, this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I want to I want to ask you to to tell us about yourself, but not before you give us a play, something, right? To play something. To play yeah, something, sure. please. Okay. Okay, let's do something. Mm. Mm. I'm so slow, but it doesn't come easy for me, no. I know you're better than this, but sometimes it may seem like you're not listening. Can you lead me to a safe place where I can be myself and you can be yourself and we can be together? We can be together. Lead me to a safe place where I can be myself and you can be yourself and we can be together. We can be together. Can someone tell me the color of love? Is it red like black? Is it black like me? Is it white like you? Will someone tell me the color of love? Cause it seems that my eyes are weak, my heart is cold and I don't know where to go, no. And I don't know where to go. Thank okay. you. This was just a taste of a song. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, let's be together. Exactly. I believe that each of us as a product of our history and our background, product of the place where we grow up and the people we meet. Let's start from the beginning and tell us who you are, Aveva. You know what? Maybe Aveva. you can start with your name, Aveva. You born yes. in Israel and you, you, you are called Aveva, right? Uh, who am I is basically the name of my first album. <laughs> but I would say that, okay, so my name is Aveva. I was born in Israel and I was given both names in Hebrew and in Amharic. Mm. So in Hebrew, my, my name was Aviva. Mm. But uh, at some point in my life, I said goodbye to that name and I uh, embraced the Ethiopian name Aveva. Uh, so uh, that's my name. Um, I was born and raised in Nazareth Elite. Uh, my parents came, made Aliyah in 1984 in Moses Operation. Mm -hmm. I'm a musician, singer, songwriter. Been doing it for almost a decade. Um, I have two solo albums and I've got to uh, collaborate with different artists in Israel, uh, performing in Israel and abroad. Um, in my music, I try to bring the most important subjects that I, in my opinion, and bringing my life story into it, uh, talking uh, mainly about social issues, uh, about acceptance, tolerance. Wait with, wait with that, wait with that. I want to okay. ask you a okay. question about that, how, how a music has become your way of life and your profession. And if you can share with us the first time that you thought, I want to do music, I want to be a musician. Mm. Take us like yeah. back. Okay. 
So I can I can share with you that I've always loved music since I remember myself. I loved singing, loved dancing, loved just listening to music. Um, so uh, that that's about like my love for music. But I was super shy when as a kid. Mm -hmm. So I never sang in front of people. Like I, I did it mainly alone in my room or in the shower. Uh, <laughs> and, and it didn't happen in one specific point of life. I think it happened like I had different uh, points in life that where I had I was more brave to meet this a uh, big dream of mine because I've always loved music and I always fantasized about doing music, but it was still a fantasy. It, it wasn't reachable. It wasn't something that I really believed I can do. So, um, so I never went for it, but at the age of 12, I think in sixth grade was yeah. the first time something woke in me. And when I saw my friends in class preparing for the big, um, uh, how do you say, um, uh, uh, the end of yeah. graduation, exactly. Yes, they were preparing and doing rehearsals. And I was jealous that I was like, okay, I told myself I have to do it. So I went to my teacher because nobody knew that I could sing. So hmm. I went to my teacher and I told her that I want to perform with my friends. And she was like, okay, let's hear you sing. And then I sang something. And that was the first time that she she loved my voice. And she was, okay, I got like a uh, solo part, I remember. And that was the first time I sang in front of people. But wow. after that, again, the, the dream has went back it's in the back of my mind, I continued uh, studying. I had different plans. Um, and studying the, music? Studying what? Just regular? No, just studying, like okay. uh, regular school, uh, you okay. know. And at the, age, at the age of 17, I was in the scouts, Israeli scouts. Mm -hmm. And I got this opportunity to join the caravan. Uh, what? which is uh, um, it, it's a group of 10 people going to the US performing in front of the Jewish communities. Here in and America. That, sorry? Here in America, in, in United exactly. States. Exactly, in America. That was the first time I visited in, in the US. And that was like amazing experience performing for, for three months. And I got a taste of that life that I always dreamed of. Um, but I think the main and the biggest point of, in life where I understood that I'm gonna do music and this is mm -hmm. what I'm going after was after my uh, military service. Like while I was in my military service, I had a serious car accident mm -hmm. and I went home um, uh, rehabilitating for a year and a half. It was like I had, uh, had injuries and my uh, leg uh, oh. was broken. Uh, so it took a, a long time for me um, to get back on my feet. Uh, and I had a lot of time to think, <sighs> a lot of time to write. And I really understood, I think, in that point that I got a second chance. Like I could, I could have died mm -hmm. in that accident. And I I wasn't uh, willing to let life pass by. Like I wanted to do what I love. I wanted to chase after my dreams and I was more hun hungry to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was where I switched, like in my head, uh, the way mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. thinking about it. And from there, it was like a really fast uh, way. Cause I went, uh, I lived in a kibbutz I went to The Voice, where I met uh, the manager of uh, a very known uh, music uh, school here in Israel. I went studying there. When was, then, when was that, that uh, The Voice thing? When was it? Yeah. I think it was like almost 10 years ago. Generally, I followed The Voice and I didn't see this part. <laughs> Your this part. is like the first <laughs> uh, season in Israel. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and then I went studying in the Limon School, where I met my friends and I started writing my own music, uh, performing with my own music. Idan Reichel invited me to perform with him. Um, and that's where like everything like mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. blown, like um, everything was happening. Yuffie, good. Yeah. So do you want to show with us one of the your uh, clip, your video? Yeah, sure. Maybe we can share the first song that I think that like really uh, got attention. It's uh, I Want to Go. So we can hear that song and see the yeah. video. It's a, uh, I love this video and I'm really proud of, of that project. So I hope you enjoy it.
I remember my neighborhood in mm, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was important for me to bring that vibe, like from my neighborhood. Yeah, it's it's a, a typical neighborhood where exactly most of the our community, right? Do you want to say something about the neighborhood and the other elements that came up in the video? Just yeah, I, I would share with you that this story, this song is uh, is talking about a story of a girl that lost her mother in a really young age. Uh, and she just missed her and she's just angry about the world and doesn't understand why yeah. is that happening. Um, the neighborhood, I would say about my neighborhood, that in my neighborhood, everyone wore Ethiopian. It was like, it wasn't a... Uh, how do you say Merkaz Klita? It was a special neighborhood. It was a special neighborhood that they brought all the Ethiopian there. And as a child, it was amazing. I re great memories that I have from like different generations playing outside with the, uh, my friends. And uh, I didn't it get it. It was Merkaz Klita. It, it was absorption it center. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. Oh. It was just a neighborhood that everyone in that neighborhood were uh -huh. Ethiopian. Okay. And just as a kid, <laughs> yeah, as a kid, it was a great experience. Um, we used to play outside all day. Uh, we used to to play with the the young, the old. Um, it felt like a big, big family. Mm -hmm. uh, but. As a grown-up, I understand that uh, it might have been uh, one of the reasons why it took a long time for our community to uh, be accepted and uh, integrate into the Israeli society because we were brought apart, like we right. grew up apart in, in groups and not within the Israeli community. So there's a there are pluses and minuses in this uh, story. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. You have like a positive memory as a girl, and yeah. a different understanding yeah. when you grow up, right? Exactly. When you moved from that neighborhood to others uh, to I don't know where. Um, after my accident, mm. I moved to, I moved to a really different uh, environment. I moved to a kibbutz. Ah, you say that. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, I I would like, um, also it came up in the video, if you can talk a little bit about the encounter between the cultures, mm -hmm. the Ethiopian, the one, obviously, you grow up with, and the other yeah. cultures you have been exposed to, including like other Western country cultures, not just Israeli cultures. Right. Yeah. Can so I would say, um, like I said, as a kid in the neighborhood, I I remember great childhood memories. Like I have great memories, mm -hmm. uh, but I also remember being in two different worlds. Like if I was in the neighborhood, I would be one thing. I would feel in one way, and if I go outside to my class, meeting with my friends from the from my class, or mm -hmm. going to a you know open space. Uh, where you see more uh, of the Israeli community, Israeli society, I would feel insecure. I would feel hmm. not accepted. I would feel... I had a lot of uh, identity issues as a kid because I had this one culture at home. I was seeing one thing at home. And when I went outside, I was seeing a whole different thing. And I... I, I, I thought I had to choose as a kid what, what I want to be, whether I want to be Ethiopian or I want to be Israeli. Mm -hmm. And I made that choice and I chose to be Israeli. And at some point in my life as a kid, I stopped eating the Ethiopian food, stopped trying to talk with my parents in Amharic, the Ethiopian language. I really tried to erase every Ethiopian part of do you remember what age, which stage was it? Like We're talking about like sixth grade, uh, even before that. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I even remember my mom working in my school as a cleaning lady. 
And I'm not proud of that, but I'm going to share it, that I was ashamed. I, I used to, to hide away because I wanted, I didn't, I couldn't handle not. see my mom in that situation and my friend seeing her. And, you know, kids could be mean sometimes. So, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it was a mix of cultures and it was very difficult to understand who am I and to be proud of who I am. Um, another culture that was a part of my life as a kid is the American, I would say African-American culture. Because I think as a kid, we didn't have any re representation. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. If you watch TV, if you see, uh, if, if you listen to the radio, uh, you didn't see any representation of my story, of my struggles. I didn't, I didn't see it. So when I went to to seeing the the African American, I could relate. I could find myself in their story. So, so you that's found how it, I, You found it through television, I guess. To, if, yeah. Yeah, I remember my older sister coming from her uh, school with videotapes, mm -hmm. uh, with clips of uh, VH1 and like Whitney Houston, Boys to Men, uh, Lauren Hill. These mm -hmm. are the artists that, that I grew up listening to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I found my story in their story. Um, so it was a mix of all those cultures together. No, it it sounds like the, uh, not very mixed. It's like you have your, I mean, from my understanding, you yeah. grew up until 12, like Ethiopian, and then you de you decide, no, it's not good. I want to be something else. And you grow up with uh, African-American, whatever culture or music. And then my question is, when you found a way to mix it, like to, to have it together in the health, healthy way the good yeah. way yeah yeah when when it's happened what i think when i started studying music mm -hmm. and people were more welcoming and more curious to hear my story and my culture and i also had this ensemble that we've learned about african music mm. And I really loved it. And I fell in love with the songs and the, the beats and the rhythm. And I was like thinking to myself, like, Aveva, this is something that you have at home. Like, you don't have to go. It's to yours. <laughs> yeah. So that's when I started going back mm -hmm. and being more interested to hear my story, like my family story, to hear about my culture, to hear Ethiopian songs, to be proud of it, not only to hear it, because even as a kid, I used to hear it in the background, right? Because my parents used to listen to only to Ethiopian music, but I wasn't open mm -hmm. to accept it. So only with music is where I started the journey of accepting the different parts of who I am and and realizing that it's 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 a great thing. It's not a minus, it's not a bad thing. Like I should embrace every part of who I am. I, I have continuation question about that. You are, okay. you said uh, about 10 years, maybe more in this field. Yes. I, I would like to hear about your perspective and like a bigger picture of uh, uh, cultures, like uh, the place of Ethiopian culture uh, among the, the other, like, I would say a wider society of Israel. What, what do you think about that? I'm not sure I understood the question. What uh, do my, I think about? My, my question is, what development are you seeing regarding the place of our culture, culture? Among, the, among the other, among the Israeli culture? In is, the Israeli society. In the Israeli, okay. yes, yes. Okay, okay. So I think that when I just started releasing my music, and in my first project, you could hear the Ethiopian instruments mm -hmm. and the Ethiopian, the Amharic language. I think that people were uh, interested and welcoming. Uh, they were happy to hear new stories and new cultures. Uh, it wasn't very popular to see Ethiopian artists. You had some Ethiopian artists. At that uh, time. Not at that time. time. 
yeah. but it was really uh, specific, like really small group of artists. And the development for me, or the big step is that now I can see that there are a lot of Ethiopian artists and not only in the Ethiopian uh, way, like in uh, Ethiopian instrument or Ethiopian music, you can see more and more Ethiopian artists in the hip hop, in the dance hall, in different genres and different places, different way of art. And I think that's a great development. Another thing that I, I, I've noticed lately, uh, recently, because we just mentioned uh, the SIG, the mm -hmm. SIG holiday. And I feel like I could see that people are more and more interested to, to get to know our culture, to hear our story. Like if 10 years ago, you, you wouldn't hear a lot about this holiday, about SIG. Right. In the mainstream, you know, mm -hmm, in, in, mm -hmm. in public places. And today you can see like people celebrating it, mentioning it in all, all cities in Israel. So uh, this is a great uh, development. I I'm going to step in for a second. Can you just say a word about what SIG commemorates? Because I'm not sure everyone on our call knows about the holiday. Yeah, do, Aviva, do you want to do it or you want me to do it? Uh, yeah, you can you can say it. Maybe it will be shorter. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, a SIGD holiday is a special uh, holiday of Ethiopian Jewish communist, community uh, based on very, very like old, holy, uh, old. It's not exactly a holiday. It's uh, a day of fasting and praying right. based on uh, Ezra and Nehemiah uh, book. The, the first the first SIGD was 2005. A uh, hundred years ago, uh, we said, like our community said, and the other community forgot it, and the Ethiopian Jews kept it for years. And the main idea of this uh, celebration, this day, is returning to Jerusalem. But there is more ideas of uh, doing tikkun, like doing tshuva, correction the the behavior of the society, helping each other, uh, and uh, other very very like relevant ideas, especially social ideas. Anyway, we are celebrating in Israel too since uh, the beginning of 80s. As Aveva said, uh, uh, now it's uh, it's 15 years already, it's national holiday. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just want to say to you, Aveva, um, I said Aviva, right? Oh, <laughs> Aveva. you said Aveva. Uh, okay. You're there good. is a big... <laughs> Beside this, uh, I would say, um, um, a, a big, uh, being a, a famous holiday among the other Israelis also, there is a big debate about, uh, about the content of SIGD. There is a criticism if SIGD become a Memuna. Memuna? The, the Moroccans? Yes, yes. You yeah. are right. You are right. Yeah. So I think it's kind of a... I see it as it's something like uh, uh, growing up. Okay, okay, you got you guys like the other Israelis got our sig, but don't don't make it like a simple thing. We have a, a don't really switch it. Idea. Don't make it something that it it isn't. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. We please. still have a way. Yeah, we still have a way to go, but I think it's 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 it's, it's we're going to the right di direction. I uh, definitely I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Um, the other thing I, ah, you know, you, you mentioned before, I just want to make sure, what's the most important project you did? What, uh, like you say, I'm really proud of that. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So I think it's the the next, the 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 other song that I, I, I send you, the, the video clip that I filmed. Uh, of, of a song, Won't Let You, that was released in my mm -hmm. latest album. Mm -hmm. And in that video, I went into different cities in Israel, uh, looking for Ethiopian women specifically. And, and I wanted to bring those women, those strong, empowering women uh, to the front. I wanted to people, the Israeli community, the Israeli society to see those strong women and to give them the place and the space to show their strength. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
And it was really interesting and it was an amazing experience because I got to meet a lot of amazing women and young uh, girls. And I think it's really important because when I met those younger girls mm -hmm. and you could, you would see in the video that I asked them about their dream. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I remember when I went to my city home uh, to Nazareth and I asked the young girls, what is your dream? They didn't have an answer. Yeah. And it's... that was so hard for me to realize that it's still happening. I remember it from my own experience, but mm -hmm. it was hard for me to realize that this is still the situation. So it was important for me to bring it up. And Let, let's it. play. Yeah, yeah. I, I know this video. I, I watch it a lot. Yeah, we can hear maybe even just some of it because we some don't have it. a good okay. time. Okay. Yeah. She gave me promises in return Guess that you never thought I would make it on my own And when you opened the door for me I thought I had a real chance To show I'm worth just like you But you pushed me to the end I've been sitting here for too long Got me thinking I won't make it My fear, my doubt only make you stronger Prove that you've been wrong Love it. Yes. Uh, uh, can you take a moment? We are we're almost out of the time. Can you yeah, take it a went moment? by really fast? <laughs> yeah. And I really want you, if like take a moment and to reflect on your personal and professional journey and say three things that built you to be who you are today. And to, and talk to the girls who follow you, three things that they need to have or good to have. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard, yeah. It's hard, okay. The, 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 the first thing I wanna say is my mom. Wow. She's my uh, main uh, motivation. I admire her and her strength and, and just looking at her and Understanding what she went through to get us to where we are today is uh, is it's amazing, and she is so powerful, and not in a in a in an obvious way. She's really shy. She's really modest, but she's so strong and so kind, and she's one of the main uh, ad admiration, mm -hmm. like main of thing that gives me strength and inspire me to do what I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is maybe to, to not always accept what people are saying about you, especially, because sometimes people are going really fast and, uh, and, and like criticize you and decides who you are and what you can right. do and cannot do without even knowing you. So I would say mainly listen to your inner voice and, and, and trust it because people around you does, do, does not know you. Like, um, and it's important to give that voice a place 
and to to let it shine and let it uh, guide you. Thank you. I, I knew you have very important thing to, te to tell us and to tell the girls. Um, yes. I, to the next step, I want to take the question of what is your a big dream and what is your plan for next five, 10 years? But I want to, Shana, take it from here. I want to say to Daraba to you. I'm really, really you, Shula. enjoyed and I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Thank you, Thank Shana, you. take it from here. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, I love that we're having like Studio Israel tiny desk concerts. I want this to be our <laughs> format, you know, sort of going further. But why don't you start with yes. that question that Shula asked about, you know, what are you thinking about for the future? And I would say that uh, if I'm looking at my life right now as a kid, I already accomplished a lot of dreams that I had. I didn't think I could I could reach. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, my plan for the next five years is I'm actually moving to the U S in two weeks, <laughs> I'm moving to LA and my dream would be, uh, to continue doing the music that I love doing with those message messages that I, it are important for me to bring on stage. I would, uh, I would want to collaborate with, uh, um, different artists that I love and admire. Um, just continuing with that, like doing music that affects people, educate them, hopefully towards to a better place. Um, I have a family, I have a young boy, um, and I just, um, wish for us to continue, uh, the, the family life, uh, in a healthy and a good way that hopefully I can do both together um yeah and that's that's really general but this is like that's my dream exciting to see you know to hear about that um I wanted to ask you about language right um you often sing in English sometimes um in Amharic I believe less so in Hebrew although feel free to correct me um you know how do you decide when you sing in which language and just about that process Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I do mainly, I do sing in, in English and Amharic, not in Hebrew. Uh, I, I've tried, I've tried Hebrew and I tried to find my voice in that language, but it didn't happen yet. Mm -hmm. um, since I grew up listening to like uh, music from the U.S., like uh, in English, it feels more comfortable for me to express myself in that language. And the Amharic language is something that I'm still learning. If you remember, as I told you, like as a kid, I didn't, I wasn't very involved in that language. Um, but I started learning through music. Um, and the choices of when and, and and where exactly each language is 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 coming is like really individual in each songs. I, I I think uh, some some songs of mine don't have uh, the Amharic language at all, uh, but it's really important for me to bring that like Ethiopian language um, in my music. Yeah, um, you know we got a lot of questions about influences. You mentioned sort you know sort of some of the greats uh, the R and B of the nineties. Right. Um, and my first concert was Boys to Men ever, so I was thinking Ooh. about. You know, you know, we're, you know, young boys to men's fans on opposite stages of, you know, opposite sides of the world. But um, sort of who are your influences now, whether Ethiopian, um, American, Israeli, otherwise? And, you know, who are you listening to? Who are you getting inspiration from? Oh, I hear a lot of different artists, Ethiopian artists that I love. Oh, wow. Uh, the classical ones would be Muhammad Ahmed. And I hear a lot of, um, like I told you, Lauren Hill is one of my favorite artists. Mm -hmm. uh, Whitney Houston, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. um, 
new artists that I love to listen are Burna Boy, Coffee, uh, uh, Snow Allegra, uh, wow, so many. I've, I've also started listening to Israeli music and I mm -hmm. love different artists here in Israel. Um, I love Eden Derso, she's a Ethiopian rapper. Um, Esterada, Yasmin Mualem, mm -hmm. uh, Ravid Plotnik. There are a lot of artists, different artists, different genres that I love to listen to. Yeah, and I think, you know, we can hear that. Um, just the fact that your taste is so varied in so many different kinds of genres, it definitely comes out on your music as well. Yes. It's, when I listened to the videos before this, I was like, huh, I'm getting a Lauren Hill vibe. So I'm glad it wasn't just, uh, it wasn't just me, but even the visual Yay. style, right, of your videos and how she often is in dialogue with children in her videos. It really, it really I was reminded of Lauren Hill. Wow, I haven't thought about it. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. Um, That's right. Yeah. Um, another question that I have is, you know, um, and that came in is, you know, so relationships to different kinds of conflicts, right? We all know that Israel, you know, has no shortage of different kinds of people struggling to get along. Um, ha, you know, have you connected at all? Or have you thought about at all um, your music vis-a-vis -vis the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, maybe Arabic music influences, cultural influences, and how do you see that? Uh, do you see that as part of your cultural identity, or if not, which is also fine. Um, but it's an interesting question. That came in. The the, the Israeli-Arab-Palestinian conflict? Right. So I think of there's sort of two questions. One is, have you thought about your work vis-a-vis -vis that conflict? And then secondly, ha you know, have you, is there any influence from, let's say, Arabic music and culture? Have you explored that at all in your personal um, artistic journey? Um, I do like to listen to Arabic music, but it's not like uh, one of my main mm -hmm. genres, I would say. Okay. Uh, regarding the conflict here in Israel, it's a very sensitive, a very sensitive issue. Yeah, I, I think um, I actually got the chance to perform with uh, Women of Peace. Um, uh, I don't know if you know the artist, Yael Dekelbaum. She's an amazing artist. She started uh, this uh, movement uh, with her music and I got to perform with her. And the message, the main message is that we are all mothers. We, we all care about our, our children and we all want to give them a good life. And for me, in my music, I try to bring that message that it doesn't matter where you're from, what is your culture, we need to find a way to live together with the differences. Like I couldn't, I couldn't imagine a world where we are all the same. I don't want us to agree, but we need to respect each other. And we need that each one of us would have a healthy, um, and good life. That is actually a perfect lead in because I wanted to ask you about how becoming, if becoming a parent, right, has changed your art, your music, right? Wow. Um, yeah, and wow. if you could talk a bit about that. I uh, I uh, looked you up on Instagram and saw some cute pictures of your baby. So I wanted to hear more. <laughs> the main thing about that is that I don't have the time that I had before <laughs> of course, to do music. And I also would say that um, I'm still processing that this change in my life. It's amazing. It's a, it's it's an amazing journey, uh, and I have an incredible kid. Um, it made me a, a much more sensitive person, and I also I've already I was a sensitive. So now I cry from every little thing. Like it's so hard for me to see uh things like violence or uh people getting hurt um if seeing the news like it's something that i can't even handle today um and i think it would definitely would come out in the future projects that i'm gonna release it's something mm -hmm. that it's is, is definitely changing who i am in a good way I'm excited to see it. I wanted to ask you about sort of diaspora and homelands, right? 
because there are some themes that I'm getting from your music and the conversations, you know, um, yeah. you know, how do you think about this? You know, you're someone who will have very soon be, have lived in, or, you know, has different, has lived in very different cultures, both within Israel and now the United States. And just how do you think about those themes um, sort of within your, both personally and also creatively in your music? Um, about the diaspora? Right, ideas of diaspora and homeland and belonging. Okay, so for me, I think I could find a piece of home in every place. It really depends who is with me. Mm -hmm. uh, but Israel is definitely a home for me. But when I went to Ethiopia, I also felt at home a little, even though I was born in Israel and I didn't know the language, like I can't even speak with the people. But when I saw the people in Ethiopia, I felt at home a little. When did you go to Ethiopia? I've been there a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've went there like uh, each year before the corona. Mm -hmm. uh, the last three years before that. Okay. Um, and in the U.S., I'm I'm really excited to see how I would feel there. Like I'm not sure. Like I've been in the U.S., but mainly touring and performing. So I don't know how it would how it would feel. But um, I think as long as I have my family with me, it would feel home. Um, and I wanted to actually ask you about reactions, right? You, um, from starting on The Voice, which like, I want to hear all about The Voice from the back end. That's, yeah. you know, um, you know, how have different groups of people reacted to your music and your story, whether um, sort of non-Ethiopian Israelis, the Ethiopian community, American Jews, non-Jewish Americans, right? What are some of the different reactions? Um, and because you've been performing now for a bit, like, has that shifted. I think you alluded to some of it in your conversation with Shula, um, but I'd love to hear about if anything has changed in those, excuse me, in those reactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think in the Israeli scene, it's, uh, my music uh, was uh, well accepted, well received, uh, people were interested to hear about my story. Um, and in the U.S., Definitely, the the Jewish community uh, was very welcoming. Um, I remember the first time I was in the U.S. talking about the journey of my family, and people were like still shocked that about the fact that I'm black and Jewish. It was really it was really interesting. Uh, uh, so I, I I know that people are very uh, welcoming in the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that I've got the chance to be in different places all around the world like I've been in Russia and I was amazed to see that a woman in the audience was singing with me even the the Amharic parts <laughs> that I, I was like how 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 did I got to, get to you like I was so surprised um in in Kazakhstan in 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 France uh I think that people are like I think that music is a great way to to communicate even when we don't have the same language even if we come from different cultures music is a great way to communicate and I'm happy to say that every place that I went I felt uh welcomed yeah I'm thrilled to hear that um I have many more questions but I thought you know we have a couple of minutes left. Do you have yeah. a like maybe one or two minute sort of uh, thing that you could sing for us? Um, and then yeah, I'll end definitely. In, yeah, and then I'll end in a sort of give my concluding remarks. Um, but why don't we hear one last bit from you um, okay. before we finish up? Okay, so let me sing you a song of a famous, amazing singer that I love. Her name is Gigi. Mm -hmm. And this song is called uh, Mingadinga. Di 
chills this is so beautiful yes. could you Thank say maybe you like so one sentence about what the words are about for those of us who i'm hard unfortunately is not great <laughs> oh this is a love song and she's a love sings, song yeah to her lover that is so far away he's traveling and she's telling him that even if he's far away she can never stop love him so I think that is a perfect note for us to end on. I want to thank Aveva so much. I want to thank Shula for helping us have this amazing conversation. I want to thank all of our partners, right? Um, Estudio Israel, um, Hadassah Brandeis Institute, the Schusterman Center, the Vilna Shul, our supporters, CJP at the Consulate General. Um, we will be back in the new year with, a con with um, an amazing artist named Gil Yefman. He describes himself as a transdisciplinary conceptual artist and, most importantly, an obsessive knitter. So for you knitting fans and textile fans, that will be exciting. And that will be February 9th. March 30th, we will have Zoya Cherkasi, who is an incredible um, Ukrainian-Israeli artist. Um, details for all of this on all of our social medias and our websites. Thank you again for everyone and have a lovely day. Thank you, Shayna. Thank you, Shula. Thank you, Shana. Thank you, everyone.